Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Scott Branson here with SportsNot.com. This is Inside the Press Box, where we get a little sassy and talk about sports, talk about trending topics. And of course, we're getting close to the Super Bowl. We're leading up to the Super Bowl this coming weekend in Las Vegas at the, between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. The teams that lost last week in the N- NFC Championship game, uh, of course, AFC Championship game as well. One of those teams was the Baltimore Ravens and their MVP quarterback. And that, of course, is Lamar Jackson. We're going to talk about Lamar Jackson. And to do that, we bring in our staff here, our crack staff of writers and editors. And that starts with uh, our managing editor uh, for the NFL. That is David Cool. You see on the bottom of your screen also Jason Burroughs, who is our is, uh, just extraordinary editor. Editor extraordinaire. I'll put it that way. Okay. I can speak. I promise I can. Ryan Dyrud, who's the founder of the LA Football Network. And Matt Johnson, who is our also our NFL writer and editor. And I'm Scott Branson, your host, as I mentioned. All right, guys, let's get into this subject because there's a lot of passion around this one, a lot of anger from certain fans around it. But Lamar Jackson comes out here as one of the best years on one of the best teams we may have seen in the history of the league. The Baltimore Ravens did so well during the regular season, get into the playoffs, and we know what happens. Uh, they deconstruct, they, 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 they deflate. Lamar Jackson doesn't have a good game. They lose to Pat Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The question on the table today is, is Lamar Jackson, do you think Lamar Jackson is one of the greatest quarterbacks uh, to play the game? And is he going to be that guy eventually? Or does this situation with him being two and four in playoff games in his career, even though he's got two MVPs, he's got as many MVPs as he's got playoff wins. Um, is that going to hold him back? And is it still a question mark for him? And I'm going to start with Jason on this one. Jason, give me your view of Lamar Jackson. Amazing athlete, in my view, great quarterback. But are you that great if you can't win that big game in the playoffs? I think that game perfectly shows there's level to this. And and a guy mm. like Patrick Mahomes is just at another level. As good as a runner as Lamar Jackson is, this game is, is in this position is about throwing the ball. You got to throw the ball. You got to make the passes. That said, he is exceedingly talented, one of the best all-around players in the game, just gifted, going to be a two-time MVP. But – the guy needs weapons. Unfortunately, Odell Beckham, as a Giants fan, that guy wasn't the weapon he needed. If he can get weapons, he can build his legacy, and he can maybe go down as one of the greatest ever and finally get Baltimore title. There you go. Yes, they're waiting for it. Ryan Dyrud, tell me your view. I know we've talked about it on the Not Zone, of course, which you should catch on Wednesdays here on the YouTube channel. But tell me what you think of Lamar Jackson uh, and, and where he's at after this latest loss in the playoffs. Yeah, obviously a great quarterback, great talent. Um, I don't think this game necessarily changes that. What it does change is, or what it does, I guess, preclude is where his greatness has reached yet. And it still has a ways to go. Now, when you're going against the greatest in the game today, you know, it's hard to get past that. We've seen the great quarterbacks of our time, you know, reach that roadblock when they when they met Brady in the playoffs or when they met Montana in the playoffs and could never get quite past that level. But the one thing I, I think we can talk about quickly, Scott, and we talked about this on the Zot, Not Zone, is you know his next evolution. Because when you look at that game specifically, and Baltimore Ravens moved out of their identity, right? Stop running the football. Six runs to their entire running back room the entire game. They were a running first football team. And as the quarterback, and again, this is not, I'm not in the huddle. I'm, I don't know what the what level is this, but the great quarterbacks take over the game for themselves, whether that's changing the play call, audibling, talking to their OC on the sidelines saying, hey, we got to do this and putting the game in front of them and changing things, not just with your arm, but with your mind as well. And I'm not saying he can't do that, but that's a game where we could have seen his evolution take shape had he taken more control, you know, in the huddle, not necessarily just between the hashes. And so when he reaches that next level, when we see other quarterbacks like a Peyton Manning or whatever that truly runs the offense, not just with his arm, but with his mind, then maybe he can reach that level of of one of the best ever. And I think he can get there, but it's going to take a lot more of the cerebral stuff. Not saying he can't do it, but whatever the dynamic is in the in the power play there, like you got to go to your OC, like Todd Monken, like, what are we doing running the ball six times? Like, what we, this is who we are. Like, we got to run more. We got to give the rock to, to Jones. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco on the other side ran 24 times. I mean, that you got to have some balance there on offense. So that's where we'll see him, I think, because he certainly has the talent to be great. Yeah, and I think that I agree with you. I think the, the game plan led him down there, uh, and, and they went away from what got them there in the first place. David, I'm interested to hear from you. I mean, you look at him, and, and, he, and, and Ryan just talked about better decision-making and things like that. 
Lamar Jackson is so good and talented. He can throw. I know a lot of people like to say, well, he just runs. No, he throws the ball. We saw that this year. He made so much so much improvement over the last two years, I believe. But when you look at him, what do you what do you see? Like, what do you see from a diagnosis standpoint in your mind is holding him back when he gets to those big games? All I know is this guy is probably the most electrifying talent we've all seen. Mm-hmm. He's, he's tremendous. He, in, in terms of being a dual threat quarterback, he's the ultimate example of that. Uh, in the end of, that the NFL has ever seen. But when it comes down to winning a postseason football game, he's not there yet, obviously, and this is going to continue to dog him. The thing is, the postseason and the Super Bowl are the ultimate measuring sticks for a quarterback, for a quarterback's greatness. So to give you a good example of that, Peyton Manning won seven MVPs. Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls. Which one would, would you rather have? <laughs> which, one would, which one would Peyton Manning rather have? Yeah. Of course, you'd want Tom Brady seven Super Bowls. So in the end, if you don't win in the playoffs, your greatness is always going to be a, a subject of conversation because you weren't able to lead your team. A quarterback's job is to lead his team to victory. He's the most important player out there on the field. He was able to do that during the regular season, but for some reason, I'm not going to fault the play calling here or any of that, Lamar Jackson did not get the job done. So it's hard for me to uh, you know, put him on a pedestal or mm. have him in the running for that, you know, title of greatest quarterback ever if he can't win in the postseason. And for right now, the two guys that got to the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes, we know about Patrick Mahomes. He's already won two Super Bowls. He's won two MVPs as well, but he won two Super Bowl MVPs. We, we, we put him on the, at the top of the pedestal right now. He's at the top of the food chain because of all that. But the guy, but Brock Purdy got to the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy did what Lamar Jackson was unable to do. Mm. So right now I put Brock Purdy above Lamar Jackson. Wow. Uh, too wow. Bold. Too bold. Woo. Uh-oh. So we got to go to Matt Johnson. Matt is our details guy, and I can see him just licking his chops on this one. But but Matt, I mean, what David said, I mean, look, you have to win the big game. There have been great quarterbacks. I think one of the best quarterbacks of all time, like top three to me, actually, is Dan Marino. He he got to the Super Bowl once, but he never won it either. But I still think he's top three. When you look at Lamar Jackson, you heard what David said. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, and you know, I go back to the AFC Championship game, which was frustrating to see because you talk about the Kansas Chiefs, bottom five run defense. You go to the analytics, even worse. Baltimore is the best run team in the NFL, <laughs> and they abandoned it completely after the first quarter, which is un- – you were in the AFC Championship game. You, you are facing Patrick Mahomes. You want him to have the football as little as possible, attack your opponent's weakness, and they went away from that. So the first person I blame for that loss is Todd Malkin. But Lamar Jackson, that performance, especially what happened, it the only explanation is he and the Ravens were rattled. Because mm. one thing, they they stopped trying to attack the middle field. They stopped trying to take the short passes. And he didn't run. You had that big run on fourth down, which you thought might have gone for a touchdown, but it was at least a 25-yard run. And that was a, okay, this is it. And we never saw that again. He had plenty of opportunities to run. His wide receivers, which Jason mentioned, they were covered up. They, they were not getting separation. And Lamar just kind of stood in the pocket and just hung around there. And mm-hmm. it was, you are one of the greatest athletes we have ever seen at that position. You have a gift that this defense cannot account for. Willie Gay Jr., who was supposed to be the Chiefs quarterback spy, was out for that game. This is the perfect time for you to run. You did it against the Houston Texans. And now in the biggest game of your life, the game that you said for years, this is what I've been, this is it. This is what I've been getting ready for. I, my past failures I've learned from. And then the biggest moments, you just stood there in the pocket and it was an unacceptable performance by him. It was an unacceptable performance by Todd Monken. And for Lamar Jackson, it has to come down to this. He has to see what Patrick Mahomes changed two years ago. Opponents stopped letting him throw deep. You have to beat us underneath. That's what Lamar has to do. He has to take what the defense is giving him, Mm. and that's both throwing underneath and that's running. Yes, I get you want to erase the narrative that you're a running-only quarterback or, you know, not bad for running back, but that is a skill you have, and you have to use it in those big moments, and he didn't, and that's the reason why the Baltimore Ravens, with their best team ever, historically, statistically, one of the best regular season teams ever, they had the perfect opportunity to beat the Chiefs at a weak moment in that franchise history when Patrick Mahomes didn't have a lot of help around him, and they failed. And that is one of those moments that, honestly, will probably haunt them for years. Wow. 
Yeah, and it's interesting you talked about that too because uh, uh, I think that one of the things I noticed to your point about his reluctance to run because y- you hear the chatter. I know these guys say they don't hear it, but they do. And and he held the ball so long, so many times, where yeah, everybody's covered. Chiefs got him blanketed, and and he's got five or eight yards in front of him, and he doesn't take off. Instead, he throws a pass, and it's incomplete. Very interesting stuff. And and if you look at that, David. Uh, and you look at, w- is it a psychological thing now for somebody like this, that, 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 that he's got to start to think about trusting himself and who he is as an athlete versus the voices in his head from what everybody else is saying about him? Yeah, I think there are some uh, athletes, this goes not just for football, but for just about every sport. When they're in the postseason and the pressure is on, they become something different than what they were normally during the regular season. You saw that in baseball back in the day with Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter, he was the same player in the postseason that he was in the regular season. Mm-hmm. And his numbers bear that out. And that, that just goes for any sport. Some, some guys tighten up in those situations. But the good ones, the great ones, don't. They just stay who they are. They, they stick with who they are. They believe in themselves. They believe, you know what, I'm just going to go out there and play this game like I always I play, I play any other game. And, and then they're able to go out and execute. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to close out this segment, this question. I want to ask you guys, I want you all to give me an answer. Uh, will Lamar Jackson ever win a Super Bowl? I'll start with you, Jason. Even though I'm a Giants fan, I've always <laughs> been a longtime Peyton Manning fan. I was happy when Peyton got his. I'm rooting for you, Lamar. You'll get it. I know it. <laughs> all right, Matt, what about you? I'm going to say no because I think Mahomes is the NFL's Jordan, and I have not wow. seen anything from Lamar Jackson or even, honestly, the Baltimore Ravens, the team that self-inflicted wounds every opportunity it gets to suggest that they can beat the Kansas City Chiefs, or for that matter, maybe even Joe Burrow and Cincinnati Bengals in the future. Mm, wow. Yeah, people forget about the Burrow and the Bengals because of the injury. Ryan? Yeah, I'm rooting for him. I really hope he does, but I, I agree with everyone so far. I think with Mahomes, with Josh Allen, with Justin Herbert getting Jim Harbaugh, with uh, Joe Burrow, it's just too stacked in the AFC, especially if Sean Payton gets a quarterback in Denver. Um, I just This was his year. I think this was his year to do it with the Chiefs being down in the way they are offensively um, and only being able to put up 10 points. Um, this was probably his window. All right, David, you get to close us out with your view on if if Lamar Jackson will ever win a Super Bowl with the Ravens. I don't think so. I I, I don't like to see great athletes fail mm-hmm. in any in any, any way, shape, or form. But this is more a mental thing than a physical thing with him. And so, and I, I don't know if he I don't know if he's ever going to be able to get over that. But again, like people have already said on, during this this time, uh, Mahomes is, is that guy. Mahomes is able to block all that stuff out and able to go out there and perform at a, at a, at an elite level and not have it affect him mentally, just be the same guy, go out there and play football. And I'm not sure if Lamar Jackson, now that he's he's suffered these these playoff defeats, um, I, I'm not sure if, he, if he's ever going to be able to, to change that. Interesting stuff. As always, from the editors and writers here at Sports Not, Matt, Ryan, David, and Jason, thank you guys for being with us. We're going to catch up with you guys again on the next episode to talk through. We're going to give our Super Bowl, have our Super Bowl conversation and give our predictions as it relates to the 49ers and the Chiefs coming up on Sunday in Las Vegas for the big game, uh, of course, the Super Bowl. Uh, do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the Sports Not YouTube channel here. We appreciate that very much. Hit that notifications bell. That way, every time we have a new video, guess what? You're the first to know. We really appreciate you guys doing that as well. And check out all the sports coverage, no matter what you're into, up on sportsnot.com. For everybody here, I'm Scott Branson. Take care. We'll see you next time.